We begin our program with one big question. 15 years after the worst terror attack on American soil, are we safer? A new terror group sprung from the ashes of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, inspiring attacks in Paris, Brussels, even Orlando. Is this the new normal? A recent poll shows 89% of Americans believe terrorism is at least somewhat likely to be part of life in the future. So what's being done today and tomorrow to ease those concerns? Joining us is Congressman Michael McCall. He is the chairman of the House Committee on Homeland Security. It's nice to have you with us. Thanks for being. Michael Thanks for having me. You bet. 15 years since 9-11. It's almost hard to believe it's been that long. It feels like yesterday to me. It, it does to me as well. And people ask me, are we safer today yeah. uh, than before? Uh, the fact of the matter, we're in the highest probably threat environment since 9-11. But the threat level has uh, changed dramatically uh, pre-9-11. So you think we're less safe? I think the numbers are going up um, in terms of investigations, uh, terror plots. We stopped a lot of bad things from happening. That's the good news. Bad news is we're still seeing more and more of these plots, and the numbers are increasing in terms of suspects, numbers of arrests uh, within the United States. What have we learned from 9-11? It would be very difficult to pull off a 9-11 style hijacking event uh, today. And what Al-Qaeda traditionally looked for were spectacular events uh, that were, you know, uh, big events. I think right now you're looking at ISIS, which is more uh, do what you can wherever you can, uh, with two directives, come to Syria and join the fight or kill where you are. The kill where you are is really what uh, most concerns us about the homeland, the ability to radicalize on the internet, rise up out of your basement and kill people. You have um, called for bringing the fight to ISIS. What exactly would that mean? Boots on the ground? Well, that's, that's a big debate, you know, right? I think it has to be a, a U.S.-led coalition forces with the Arab League of Nations fighting this fight as well. It's their backyard uh, and their religion. But we have to do that. But also, so that we have to have a political solution to Syria, a diplomatic solution, and, and most importantly, a counter-narrative to the ideology that is defeating us today in, in this war against uh, Islamist terror. We have to call it what it is, it's radical Islamist terror, but we also have to deal with it with a, a military strategy that will achieve that goal. And right now we're just kind of playing whack-a-mole. We're not winning this conflict. And then in addition to that, though, we, the political diplomatic counter-narrative to the ideology, at the end of the day, this is a war of ideology, that they are winning over the internet. But don't we already have a coalition that includes, what, Australia? I mean, you can name them as easily. Australia, Belgium, Denmark, UK. Who am I leaving out? Jordan's in there. But they're not stepping up to the plate. And only recently have we seen any limited success in the region. Uh, as long as they're there and they can operate freely as a governed territory, they can conduct these external operations. So I think the military piece is important, but... Drone strikes as well, but drone strikes alone cannot kill an ideology as well. Fifteen years after 9-11, how concerned are you about cyber terrorism, which frankly was not something that I felt like we were talking about all the time 15 years ago. When you look at cybersecurity, Russia, China, remember China stole 20 million security clearances. Iran tries to shut down our financial sector. The, the power grid is being brought down. The Russian allegations trying to interfere in our elections. This is serious stuff to undermine our democracy. Uh, this is where cyber, I think, uh, should be given more attention. So then let me ask you a question about the commander in chief forum in which um, relationship with Russia was discussed with, with Donald Trump. And he has often, I think brag is actually a fairly accurate word when he talks about his relationship with Putin and, and, and certainly is cozy, they're, they're friendly. Does that concern you with all that we know about the Russian potential involvement in, in cyber crimes, the way he describes his relationship with the um, Russian leader? You know, I've, I've advised him on national security issues. Uh, this is one area where I would caution him that Russia is not our friend. Mr. Putin is not our friend. He's been very aggressive, not only uh, on the ground expanding his territory, but also in cyber offensive attacks. And so um, once KGB, always KGB, can we reach out to him? Sure, but through, through strength, peace through strength. Congressman Michael McCall, thank you for joining us.